Hey you guys, um, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie Robinson and um, welcome to my vlog. Um, if you're just joining me as part of this, this video is um, one of many in what I call like my pregnancy journey or pregnancy series. Um, and it's kind of a follow-up to a previous video that I posted where I was actually in the ER. Um, so I wanted to give you guys like a quick update on my health and also explain kind of why I have been not entirely um, showing up a ton on my social media channels. I have had a little bit of a rough pregnancy and I know women that have much more difficult ones. And at the end of the day, I'm just grateful that our little boy is still incubating and still in my tummy. So really I can't complain at all, but um, it hasn't been a super easy journey. So I share that kind of as encouragement and I wanted to hop on here and make this video with a health update to kind of explain some of the things that have been going on that were so weird to me because I ended up having to see like six different specialists to get it diagnosed. Um, if this happens to you in your pregnancy, I'm hoping maybe these videos can help you out or give you a little bit of background knowledge. I am in no way, shape or form a doctor. Um, I am a psychologist and a neuroscientist. Um, I'm in grad school for psych. So I am not at all a doctor or an OBGYN, although I have worked in women's health for years and worked in labor and delivery for about five years. So I do have a good bit of like pregnancy background knowledge, but always, 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 um, talk to your doctor, find a good doctor. Don't diagnose yourself off of YouTube or WebMD or everything else in the world because you'll think you're dying. So with that being said, um, just a quick recap. I went to the ER when I think I was like 23 weeks pregnant um, because I couldn't breathe. It really wasn't shortness of breath. It was pain breathing, which was resulting in shortness of breath. Um, they did a D-dimer test. <coughs> they drew blood and checked that um, they did a CAT scan after I was unable, I wasn't breathing, I was um, really uh, coughing a ton at that point and they thought I had a pulmonary embolism. Um, and then, what did they do? I don't think they really did much else. They didn't really do much else. They finally checked the baby after me being there for like eight and a half hours and then they sent me home and my diagnosis was shortness of breath but that was never the issue um the larger issue was that i was having like extreme sternal pain and the extreme sternal pain like i described it before, before as if um someone had done like when you do cpr effectively um you should break the person's ribs and sternal area you don't necessarily have to like you shouldn't necessarily but um, to actually physically compress the heart enough that you're pumping blood and circulating it throughout the body, often those things happen as a result. Um, so I felt like someone that had had CPR done on them because my sternum felt like it was broken and with every single breath I was just having horrible pains, like like a seven and a half out of 10 on the pain scale, um, on my pain scale, I think. So what they ended up um, doing was they referred me to like an orthopedic specialist. They referred me to, um, a pulmonologist. They referred me to like an asthmatic pregnancy asthma person. And then I went to a chiropractor and I saw, had all these tests done, pulmonary function tests, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it turns out that I have something called costochondritis. Um, now I'm just going to give my kind of layman's explanation of it to you guys, but definitely look into it more because it's affecting me on both the front and the back of my body. And as a result, like just having a big, um, effect on my breathing. And so what costochondritis is and kind of the, the simple, simple way to understand it is it's an inflammation of the cartilage in your rib joints. So your ribs kind of connect around to your sternum on the front side and your spinal column on the back side. And at both of ribs are, are bones, obviously, but at both of these connections, there aren't joints. So instead, what is present is cartilage. So they're kind of like cartilaginous joints, I guess you could think of them that way. Um, at these connection points, these, these cartilage points, I'm extremely inflamed. 
So what happens, and, and they said often when it's, it's common in women that um, it usually happens like later in the pregnancy. So it's a little bit unusual that I was having it so early. Um, it usually happens like end of third trimester or something, although you can see it earlier. Um, it's also present in people that have panic attacks or anxiety, um, which I don't have either. Um, and it's also present in people that have like chronic vomiting disorders. Those are kind of the most commonly seen situations. Well, if you recall from my previous videos, my first trimester was rough and I was puking all the time. Um, and so I'm wondering if that could have like contributed to it. Maybe my first trimester vomiting a lot, um, may have started to inflame the cartilage and it has just, uh, gotten worse as the pregnancy progressed and my belly grew. So I'm wondering if that could have contributed to it, um, the vomiting and nausea and morning sickness during the first trimester. But anyways, um, so kind of the state of things now, they said it happens a lot in people um, when you're like, I've been working out a lot and I've been trying to stay fit this pregnancy and I have been doing like safe ab workouts. So not things that are dangerous for baby or um, dangerous for, for my stomach. Um, as my, my abs start separating and whatnot. But um, I've been doing pregnancy safe exercises and they said kind of what happens when you're carrying the way I am is your basically your guts go up instead of um, out. So my mom definitely went out. Um, she was just kind of more round everywhere. And I am definitely carrying the baby more front frontwards. Um, and my abs are still kind of supporting on the sides and as a result, like your stomach and your guts and those internal organs just pop up. And so that puts pressure on your diaphragm and your lungs and your ribs. So, okay, so they're going up. Where do your ribs go? Out. Well, your ribs can't go out because they're bones that are connected on both sides with cartilage. So what happens? Well, the only place where they can wiggle is at those joints. So where those joints are is they're attached to the sternum on the front, attached to your spinal cord on the back, well, another interesting component that I thought was totally unrelated to the breathing was um, back pain that I've been having. Now, I've, I've had sciatica throughout this pregnancy. I've been having a lot of lower back pain. Um, I have degenerative disc disease and I had um, potentially like herniating discs uh, as a result of weightlifting um, as like a D1 athlete um, and, and lifting weights like way too young when I was a swimmer. but what's interesting is the pains that i was having in my like thoracic region um on my back are actually not related to the herniated disc now unlike the numb like sciatic pain in my lower back the pain i was having in my thoracic area was like a burning sensation which is why i thought it was a herniated disc burning is often associated with um nerve nerve problems in your back and I was having like a burning sensation when I would like twist and move. And what is interesting is that's exactly where, um, it was happening exactly in the region where, uh, costochondritis would affect the rib joints on the back side of you. So what happens is if I'm working out heavily, um, like if I go to the gym and I'm doing cardio, um, if I am, like walking outside in the freezing cold, it's like 27 degrees here right now, um, breathing more heavily if I'm singing in church, like singing in church really gets me. Anything that's causing me to like breathe a lot, expand my rib cage to its its kind of more maximum capacity, etc., it causes um, the costochondritis to get worse. Um, which actually, if you if you want to dissect the word, like it, it just explains kind of the whole condition. Um, but it's something that they can treat and help with medications, but they can't really do that until I'm not pregnant anymore. So the course of action right now is just kind of know my limits and try to not breathe as heavily. Um, and if it gets worse, uh, then, then we'll kind of explore other options. But for right now, I just kind of deal with the pain um, I can do over the counter medications, but I'm, I'm just kind of not because I'll just deal, you know, like it's not, it's not killing me. Um, as long as I know it's not a pulmonary embolism, I'll survive. So that being said, it, it is really intense some days and really painful. It gets a lot worse after I eat. Um, again, because probably those guts are all pushed up and compressing, um, the, the volume of my lungs. 
Um, and other than that, we have the baby and uh, we'll hopefully, I'll start uh, getting treated for it right after baby comes out, um, so long as it doesn't affect like breastfeeding and whatnot. Um, and then we go from there. And unfortunately, my doctor said that it's often something that will recur with every pregnancy. Um, but what, what's unique is like, I don't have any other breathing related pregnancy issues. I'm, you know, not super out of breath when I do things. I'm not, um, having like pregnancy rhinitis or anything else, like any of the other weird congestion breathing issues, like sleeping, having to be totally propped up sleeping, none of that. Um, this was just a very unique pain in this region. And again, like the burning on the backside, um, so I wanted to share it with you guys because I finally seem to have like a diagnosis, which is so exciting. I think it was a couple weeks of just having no idea what was going on um, and was really frustrating and discouraging. Um, so that's my health update for you guys. Um, I am a costochondritis survivor. But anyways, there's some like great videos out there about it. I read up on in some of my textbooks about it um, and also just talked to, talk to my doctor. But if this is sounds like something that you're struggling with, definitely check it out. So the only way that I, um, they, they put it together when I told them about the pain in my back. But literally, I suggested this to so many people and they're like, you don't have that. I think you have pregnancy related induced asthma or pregnancy related asthma mm -mm, like I don't and the pulmonary function test showed that and anyways so just um advocate for yourself I don't as a healthcare provider like and not a doctor but I'm sure doctors get annoyed as well by people completely uh, self-diagnosing themselves and coming in with stacks. My mom does this. My mom is like a chronic doer of this, like comes in with stacks of like disorders that she thinks that my sister had a, a has struggled for a lot of her life with a chronic illness. And so um, my mom is like a big self-diagnoser. Um, but that being said, I, I don't think there's anything, it, it gets annoying as a provider, but I also think in this day and age, you have to be your own advocate. Um, and so I would encourage you guys to do your own research if this is something that you think is affecting you as well. Um, and you're pregnant, it doesn't just happen in pregnant people. So it could totally be happening to you and you're not pregnant. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching and thank you all for the positivity. Days is over here getting booty rubs, but um, thank you all for the positivity and the thoughts and prayers. Um, I really felt them and appreciated them, especially because I was going through a lot of it alone um, in a new city with new healthcare providers um, and trying to work everything through insurance and all of that fun stuff and canceling work and <laughs> sessions because um, I had to go see like a bajillion specialists and have 10 doctor's appointments in the course of a couple weeks. So anyways, um, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up um, if you're happy that baby and I are healthy or if you enjoyed this video um, and want me to make more, shoot me a message in the comments below if you have questions or if there's a video you want me to make um, related to pregnancy because we're coming to the end of it, guys. Like we're, we're really getting there um, and I will talk to you guys soon. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.